Hey guys, Brother Ronnie here. Um, I want to talk about a passage of scripture. This is one that stumped me for a long, long time. See, when I got saved, I was introduced to uh, dispensationalism, uh, you know, the pre-trib rapture, the seven years of tribulation, uh, you know, the re second return of Christ and uh, the millennial kingdom set up for a thousand years, uh, Israel and the church being separate and all of that false doctrine surrounding um, John Nelson Darby and Cyrus Schofield's teaching of, uh, of uh, the end times. And um, as I got away from that, you know, I began to see other things in many of those passages of scripture. I want to share something with you here. I used to read Matthew chapter 24. That is probably uh, one of the uh, places where everybody goes to when they want to talk about the end times, the last days, things like that. Um, I want to share something with you here, though. Um, and this is a end times prophecy. Our Lord um, told us that this is something that we will see. And, uh, you know, I think he told us something that you're not going to hear in the institutional religious system. So let's jump right in and let's read what um, is for us available here. Matthew chapter 24, the Gospel of Matthew. Chapter 1, he said, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, See you not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. So let's look at the situation here. So these disciples, they tell Jesus, they're like, Lord, look, look at this beautiful temple. I mean, this was everything that they knew about God was you know, centered in that temple. And, um, you know, it was, it was just the place. It was the house of God. It was where God dwelled. It was a very important thing. And they come to Jesus and they're like, you know, like he, he ought to be impressed with all this. Look at this Lord. And, and the Lord's like, yeah, yes, yeah, it's, it's coming down. <laughs> Not one stone going to be left standing upon another. And, and uh, you, you know, I'm sure that they were like, what? To them, I'm sure it didn't register in their mind. You know, it's kind of like, um, again, everything that they knew, everything they knew about God centered around this particular system, this temple system. Just like today, everything most people know about God is centered around the institutional religious system. And then some guy like me comes on YouTube and says, hey, is the Lord calling his people out of that? And you have that same, huh? Why would the Lord not continue to use this temple system? Or people today say, why would God not continue to use this institutional religious system? As if God leading his people out of the institution is the same as God leading his people out of the body of Christ. They're not one in the same. One is an institution and one is a blood-bought, born-again, spirit-baptized body, temple, physical temple of the living God where he indwells us through his Holy Spirit. Um, and a lot of people don't understand why we can separate from a building and still be the church. And this is what the disciples was probably thinking. How can this be? Why is this, you know? So they had another question. <laughs> and, I, and I'll be honest with you. If I would have been here, guys, I probably would have had a lot more questions than this. But I am thankful that they did ask the uh, the question that they did ask. I'm very thankful. Um. I, I want to I want to read it again in the context. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and the disciples came to him to show them show him the building of the temple. And Jesus said to them, "See you not all these things. Verily I say to you, that not there shall not be left here one stone upon another which shall not be thrown down." And as he said upon the Mount of Olives, <laughs> the disciples came to him privately, saying, "Tell us when shall these things be." And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Can you can you imagine? I, I, I'm not trying to add the scripture here, but can you imagine this conversation? I mean, Jesus says to them, you know, he says, look, they're like, hey, Lord, look at this temple. Look at this beautiful, magnificent temple. And Jesus says, yeah, it's coming down. One stone upon another. It ain't, ain't going to be, it does not, it's, it's coming down, Jack. And the disciples are over there going, you know, what's up? What's he talking about? What is this? 
You ask him. Oh, Peter, you ask him. Oh, John, I ain't asking him that. You ask him. Can, can you imagine the conversation that might have taken place behind the scenes? Um, and finally, you know, they just go, you know what, let's all go ask him. So it says here, and this is why I chuckled. It's kind of funny because I, I can only imagine if I were in their place, I would have had so many more questions, guys. But, uh, and as he sat upon the out of the, upon a, ugh, as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world or the end of the age. And Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. You see, they come to him and they said, you know, when is these things going to be? When is this you know, temple going to be torn down? And what is going to be the sign of your coming the end of the age? And Jesus begins with a warning that we would do well to take heed of. He says, take heed that no man deceive you. Why, Lord? Why should we take heed? What should we be taking heed of? What should we be on the lookout for, Lord, in the end of the age and as a sign of your coming? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Now, if you've been in the institutional religious system very long, you've probably heard this passage of scripture talked about. And they will tell you this, that in the last days, right before Jesus comes, there's going to be a lot of people rising up claiming to be Christ. And their claiming themselves to be Christ is going to deceive a lot of people. In fact, many people are going to be deceived by these false Christ, these people claiming to be uh, the Christ. Now, how many of you believe that we are in the latter part of the last days? I mean, I really do. We, we know biblically we've been in the last days ever since the day of Pentecost. Uh, the last days began at Pentecost, and they uh, will come to all the way until the second coming of Jesus Christ uh, has been. That period of time has always been considered the last days. Um, but we believe most of us that are looking at the signs and, and, and we believe that we're in the latter part of these last days. So if that is true, we should be seeing the very things our Lord talked about here. How many of you have seen someone stand up and claim to be Jesus Christ? I mean, there's been a couple maybe in my lifetime. I think about the Charles Manson guy who, you know, claimed to be Jesus Christ. I think a while back there was some fellow down in South America somewhere claiming to be uh, the Christ. And, uh, you know, but most of these guys are so out there um, that, you know, you, you just, they're not deceiving many. They're, they're really not. They're, there's not a lot of people. I mean, Charles Manson had a very small following. And, you know, fortunately, most of these guys aren't deceiving many. So this can't be who he's talking about here. If we're in the last days, there should be many people claiming to be Christ, and many people should be deceived by that. But quite frankly, we don't see that in the world. So what is the Lord saying here? Let's read this again. And Jesus said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I'm Christ and shall deceive many. He said here that in the last days, in the time before he's coming, there would be many people that would come in his name. They come in the name of Jesus Christ. They say that I am the Christ. They're not claiming themselves to be the Christ. These many people are saying that Jesus is the Christ. Look what he says here. He says, saying that I am the Christ, not that they're the Christ. They're saying I'm the Christ. Many people will come in the last days claiming that Jesus is the Christ. They come in his name. They claim to represent him and shall deceive many. Where do we see this fulfilled? Do we not see this very prophecy fulfilled in the modern day institutional religious system? where many men stand in pulpits, drawing salaries, claiming to be coming in the name of Jesus Christ, 
claiming that Jesus is the Christ, and they are right about that. They, they do have at least that kind of uh, truthfulness and theology. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. But they deceive many. Many are deceived. What does this mean? This means that in the last days, Jesus predicted a large number of religious leaders that would claim to be coming in Christ's name, claim to be representing Jesus Christ, telling you that Jesus is in fact the Christ, and in so doing, they are deceiving you. Deceiving you with what? With the very things that Jesus goes on to describe here in the rest of Matthew chapter 24. We're not going to discuss all that, but the point being is be on guard. These are not people claiming to be Jesus Christ. These are people claiming to represent Jesus Christ. There's another passage of scripture that says something very similar to this. It says that Satan presents himself as an angel of light. So it's no marvel that his ministers also claim to be ministers of righteousness. This is the many, once again, Jesus was talking about. He talks about it again in Matthew, uh, in the Gospel of Matthew. He said, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not uh, do all these wonderful works and prophesy in your name and cast out demons? Where does all this take place? What takes place inside institutional Christianity? Now, some of you right now are thinking, well, Brother Ronnie, God has always used the institutional religious system. Well, let me tell you something. Those disciples that asked Jesus this question, they knew that Jesus, that God had always used this temple. And they didn't see the change come in the horizon, the change on the horizon. God was done with that. God was calling his people out. I want to tell you something. This institutional religious system that many of you hold dear to, God can call his people out of that and still have a church because the church of Jesus Christ upon this earth is not built with brick, concrete, nails, hammer, wood, any of that stuff. It is built upon the apostles and the prophets, each of us a living stone. Jesus Christ himself, the chief cornerstone of this temple, and every one of us blood-bought, born-again, spirit-baptized into the body of Christ are living stones creating the temple of God. There is a new temple being built and it is a spiritual temple. God dwells in that temple through the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. And uh, that is the truth. God never started an institution. Jesus Christ never built a building. The Apostle Paul never built a building. They never passed an offering plate, took up tithes, or threatened you with a curse if you didn't support them. Speaking of that, somebody asked me in my last time I wore this t-shirt in a video. They said, Brother Ronnie, what does your shirt say? We only see the bottom of it. It says, mandatory tithing is religious extortion. It has a picture here. I don't know if you can see it clear. It's a pastor standing in a pulpit, and he says, pony up, suckers, pony up. In other words, go ahead and finance my family business. Um, somebody sent me a message the other day and said, uh, uh, that they heard my testimony. I used to be independent Baptist or member of an IFB, Independent Fundamental Baptist. Um, and they were telling to me, or they were telling me that they believed that the IFB churches are all cults. Now, I, I, I want to say this, all right? I'm not here to attack anybody. I believe God has true blood bought spirit-filled Christians that are members currently of the IFB churches. I do believe God is calling his people out, but I'm not saying that everybody that is in the Independent Baptist Church, that it's a cult and that people that are a member of it are, are cultish. Um, I myself was a member of an Independent Baptist Church, Southern Baptist Church, and for a short period of time, I attended some other churches, um, some charismatic churches. And, um, you know, there's people in all those churches that have some truth, and there's people in all of those different denominations that have some errors. That is the thing about the institutional religious system. They divide us up, and they give us a little bit of truth and a whole lot of error in every particular denomination. That's why the whole thing needs to be junked. Um, people need to come back to sola scriptura by the scriptures alone. 
Um, I do believe, I, you know, there's some people out here now that want to attack the scriptures. They say, well, the scriptures are not our teacher. The Holy Spirit's our teacher. You know, and that's true. But the Bible also tells us that we are to uh, test the spirits to see if they are truly of God. How do we test them? We test them by the word of God. If you throw out the Bible, I'm sorry, you've thrown out the truth. You've thrown out your litmus test for truth. And I think that's a very, very foolish thing a very foolish idea. Um, I think it's a very Catholic idea. I think that's probably exactly who's behind it. So many of these men out here who claim to be reforming the church today, and yet they're standing on Catholic principles. We don't need the Bible. We've got the Spirit of God in tradition. That is a very Catholic ideology that they are uh, feeding you. Make no mistake about it. That is not Reformation doctrine. That is counter Reformation uh, placed out there by Jesuits and so forth. But anyway, I uh, thank you guys for watching, man. Thank you guys for the fellowship that we have here um, in the in the comment section and all that. Let me say one final thing. Many of you have reached out to me and said, "Hey, um, brother Ronnie, we would like to fellowship maybe somehow online and all that." I, I will tell you this: I am not a tech guy. Um, I barely know how to do what I do getting these videos up. I, I'm not very familiar. I know there's a lot of stuff online. Um, some of you guys were making fun of me that I didn't know the name of a website. Um, but I'm just not a tech savvy guy. And, uh, you know, I called the name of a website. And I, I think I missed, I quoted it wrong or something. And, and uh, somebody came back and corrected me on it. And, um, Anyway, I, I, I'm just not good at that stuff. But, you know, I'm all for, I, I know there's a lot of programs where like people can get on group text calls and it's live and you see their face and you hear what they're saying. I would not be opposed to doing something like that sometime. Um, and, uh, you know, I, but I don't want to head nothing like that up. Uh, I don't feel like that's something that God's called me to do. If someone else wanted to, I wouldn't say I'd never participate. I certainly love fellowship, even if it's online. But I just want to let you know, I'm not ignoring you guys. I just don't, don't really know much about how to do that. Y'all set something like that up, let me know. Um, I, I will tell you this, I'm not much for debating. I, I get it all the time. I want this channel, again, to be uplifting, to be encouraging, um, I allow people to leave comments that I don't agree with sometimes for the sake of keeping the peace. Now, blatant, blatant false doctrine, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't tolerate that. But, you know, I do understand we're going to have some differences in, op in opinion. You know, some people hold to King James Version only. Some people hold to, you know, you can read the New American Standard. Um, I... Uh, uh, th those are all things that people like to fight and argue about, and I'm just not, I'm not big on, on that stuff. I would rather us focus on the things that we do have in common, but I think they have to be essential doctrines. Um, they are essential Christian doctrines, um, and they're under attack a lot. So again, I wouldn't mind, uh, doing something like that, but, uh, uh, again, it would it would only be probably occasionally as time allows me to do that that um, that I could do it. But anyway, I'm not going to sit here and ramble about that, man. Thank you guys for watching. Y'all have a good afternoon.